is my new series, Florida's Best Weekend Getaways. I'm going to take you to some of the most amazing places right here in the state of Florida. We're going to be travelers, not tourists. You may have been to some of these places, but you've never been with me. So you ready? Let's go. Every week, I'm going to be taking you somewhere that you can drive to from Tampa. And for the first episodes we are going to Key West and I know some of you are thinking wow that's an eight hour drive not the way I'm gonna do it we're gonna drive about two and a half three hours to Fort Myers and then take a high-speed ferry to Key West so buckle up we're on our way good morning guys it's 7 15 I grabbed a room at the Hampton Inn and I'm on my way to the ferry so I'm here at the ferry in the parking lot it's nice secured parking, big parking lot. Check out keywestexpress.net for more information. Wow, the boat looks a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Very nice. All aboard. All right, guys, so I'm on the ferry, going to Key West, and it's really, really nice. There's a full bar, they have food, the seats are really comfortable, there's food. There's a, upstairs a lot of seating. Um, it's actually really, really nice, a lot nicer than I thought. I actually love it, so I'm really excited. The ferry leaves every morning at 8.30 a.m. from Marco Island and from Fort Myers. And it's about a three, three and a half hour ride. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome everybody to Key West. At this time, your luggage, if you checked it on the back deck, has been pulled out of the carts and is available for pickup. So please make sure to pick up any bags that you check before you get on the vessel. All right, guys, here's my hotel, the Duval House. Ready to go inside? I want you to check out my room. It's very cozy and it's very nice. It's very cold. It's very hot outside. Lots of room, like if you're staying, you know, for more than a day. Full kitchen, a lot of closet space, three drawers on each side. And then you got your fridge, which I have some beers in. Check out the balcony, guys. I really like it because you can just sit out here, chill, smoke, drink. People watch, that's what I've been doing. This is a prime spot because there's not many places that you stay where you'll be facing to Wall Street and have a balcony to sit. So this is like a prime spot in Key West. The great thing too about this hotel is it's in the middle of everything on Duval Street. So it's walking distance from everything. So like the location is like perfect. Two ceiling fans up here, which it, for me, that's, that's like key. Like the room has to be cold. There's an air conditioner over there, air conditioner here. Two ceiling fans, ceiling fan in the bathroom and in the kitchen. Because so I get hot really easy and plus it's really hot here in Key West. So the room stays ice cold. You know, and you can always say it, a, a Westin, a Hyatt or whatever, big hotel, take elevators and all that. But this is a real bed and breakfast. It's very homey, it's real Key West style. That's how I like it. And the bed, let me tell you guys, I'm really picky with beds. So comfortable. I slept in till 11 today. Very, very, and the, everybody here is so nice. So everybody needs, if you come to Key West, check out the Duval House.
Hi guys, tonight I'm at Theo's Fish Wagon in Key West. This place is amazing. It's been around forever. It has really good fresh conch, fried shrimp. Their grouper sandwiches are amazing. They have cracked conch. They have deep fried hot dogs that are awesome. And one of the best cheeseburgers on the island. The menu is incredible, so I'm really excited. All right guys, so dinner is served. We have our deep fried hot dog with coleslaw, conch fritters, which are to die for. These are fried pink Key West shrimp, and that's the grouper sandwich. So I'm gonna try one of these little conch fritters for you. And they're like really fresh too. I know it's gonna be so hot. I chose to bring you guys to Bio's Fish Wagon because it's very authentic. It's been here for a really long time, and the fish is just so fresh. The food's just really, really amazing. No frills, just really good food for good prices. So that's why I chose it. Hey guys, I'm on Duval Street and I'm going to the Conk Shack. Let's go in and see how it is. So I'm here with the owner of Conk Shack. This is Matt. What are we having today? Well, today you ordered uh, main lobster roll, which is one of our signature items, uh, as well as our conk fritters, which is the recipe that we've been using since we opened back in August of 2009. Uh, and crack conk fries. It's a uh, simple crack or a conk preparation. It's actually not done very often, yeah. but it's done right. It takes a lot of manual labor to pound that conk as soon as you can do it. Uh, but prepared right, it's delicious. Awesome. All right, your conk fritters are legendary. You want to share the recipe? I would love to, but then I'd be out of it. <laughs> Exactly, right? I actually uh, moved down here in the spring of 2009. I'd never even visited the U.S. before. Oh, wow. Uh, I used to run hockey. Changed the pace. My wife and I wanted to move down south. Uh, kids were young enough that we could make the transition down here. And the next thing you knew, I was, rather than signing player contracts, I was flipping burgers. So That's awesome. Growing up from there. And you have another restaurant that you own down here? Yes, we just uh, took over a year and a half ago, Hurricane Hall right now. Uh, up just at the top of the island, across the golf course. It's uh, fantastic, laid back, truly the spirit of what the U.S. is about. Awesome. It's very low-key, sitting on the water, and it's the freshest fish you get anywhere in the U.S. So We're able to buy right from the fishing captains, right out of our marina. At her, say the name again? Hurricane Hall. Hurricane Hall. Freshest fish anywhere in Key West. Anywhere in Key West, guys. You gotta check that out. Well, I can't wait to try these conch fritters. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys. First, I'm gonna try the crack conch with key lime aioli sauce. Y'all making a movie video? Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> Bomb. Love it. So now I'm gonna try this beautiful lobster roll. Oh my god. Mmm. Amazing. You guys, amazing. I could just inhale this right now, but I don't want to be a button on camera. So good. Alright guys, and this sauce is the spicy Bahamian pink sauce. And as some of you know that know me, I'm not really into the spicy spicy. So I chose to stick with the key lime aioli. But this is, I took a taste. I mean, it's definitely really spicy and it's very good if you like spicy. I can't deal. So I'm gonna dip my conch fritters in the key lime aioli. Oh my God. Best conch fr fritters I've ever had. Best. Wow. So good. Make sure you guys check out myconkshack.com. It's amazing and I promise you, you will love it. And if you come here on a cruise, what the best part too is that when you come off the cruise ship, it's right here on the right hand side. So you can't miss it and it's convenient and it's the best. Well, I'm gonna inhale all this. Maybe not all of it, but pretty much almost. 
Hi guys. That right there is called the bowl. There's three floors. The first floor is like just rock music, you know, low key, normal, you know, if you're into rock. And then the Garden of Eden, which is the rooftop upstairs, is crazy. It's so wild up there. You're not allowed to take cameras or video of any kind up there. It's clothing optional, basically. And let me just tell you, I've been naked up there. So it is no joke, and it's amazing. You get body painting. It's going down up there in Garden of Eden rooftop. That's all I got to say. that they were open, which was amazing, and I came with Puma Sweet, who loved it. I couldn't imagine coming to Key West without coming back here again. So, guys, what are we having tonight? First of all, we have um, in front of you mm. a delicious pan-seared hogfish served with a banana salsa. Oh my. Grilled sweet corn, ginger glazed carrots, and a savory broccoli cake. Oh my, smells amazing. We also have an appetizer trio which is a small bowl of lobster macaroni and cheese, grilled Key West pink shrimp with a lime chutney. Mm. Spicy lime chutney. Mm. A caprese salad. Wow. One of our favorite dishes, which is uh, lobster thermidor. Wow. Um, and a petit filet mignon. And again, ginger glazed carrots, savory broccoli cake, and uh, mashed potatoes. Wow. How amazing does that look, guys? You guys jealous? A little bit, right? <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Mm. Wow. So good. So we're gonna try the caprese salad. Which looks amazing. Oh my god, that's so good. How did you come up with this? The caprese salad? It's so good. So instead of doing a traditional caprese salad because of just the theory behind the restaurant, we try to utilize um, as much produce as we can uh, as close to our location. So we're using a hydroponically grown cherry heirloom tomato uh, that's grown in Florida. Mm. And with that, it just naturally altered the presentation of the salad. Amazing. Oh my god, I can't deal with you guys. No. Um, you guys so, just... what you're putting in your mouth is a grilled marinated Key West pink shrimp with a spicy lime chutney. The shrimp has been marinated overnight in various spices, of course. Wow. It's resting on a bed of spicy lime chutney, which is one of our favorite things in the restaurant. And it, was it was actually when we got the restaurant, it was the very first thing we made in the kitchen to kind of like, you know, start breaking the champagne across the back. Yeah. It's, it's so delicious. And um, it was really hard to pick one thing to put it on, otherwise the menu would be, you know, ribs with spicy lime chutney and ice cream with spicy lime chutney. So, um, that's what you're eating. I am in love. Like, I'm not leaving. I'm staying with them, guys. So, <laughs> if you can't find me, I'm gonna be with them. Okay? <laughs> Mario Milano, yeah, is here. Forever. In the basement. Holy <laughs> it's so good. I don't care, keep me wherever you want. Wherever. I think so many Americans use cilantro the wrong way. And so this is an entire stalk of cilantro with about a quarter inch cut off the, of the stalk and that's the base for the chutney. Um, and I think so many people just use the leaf cilantro. Yeah. Which is probably the least flavorful. The least flavorful. Yeah, I agree. More than anything. This is like serious. So now I'm really dipping in the shrimp in the chutney. Like really getting in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. What a difference. Right? Holy s***. Seriously. 
It's good on everything, unfortunately. Oh my god. That's my go-to lunch. I make tacos like yeah. so much. It's like good on steak, French fries, mm. cookies, yeah. whatever you can put it on. I don't know about cookies. I don't know about, don't know about that. Cookies. I'll try it. <laughs> Only with you though. Oh my. So amazing, guys. Like I'm in love. So now we have the lobster mac and cheese on a toasted piece of bread. Let's try this. Tell me about this wine, this is the best red wine I've ever had. And I've been all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I heard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a cute one. Um, this is uh, Giuseppe Lenardi Amarone. He's one of our, um, we like to collect these wines, which are, there are a few others here, um, from these very small vineyards from um, particularly Italy and Spain. And this is one of my favorites too. Big, nice, deep, steakish. Amazing. Uh, red wine. Uh, if you've never had an Amarone, I would try one immediately. Um, what else should I say about it? It's, um, all these wines are by very small vineyards. Um, they have to meet a certain criteria to receive a little gold sticker here. Gotcha. In small vineyards. They have to be family owned for you know hundreds of years. They have to have a limited number of uh, production of barrels, usually usually like 800 or less. Um, Gener generally, it's just a minimum of a third generation winemaking family uh, to be part of the collection, and they produce less than 10% of the wine for their region. So with oh, that, okay. uh, the Amarone um, has bound all of these together, and so all small productions, a lot of the wines are still flower pressed using the weight of the grape. They just started straining some of the red wines for Americans, and it's a, a great way to taste wines, in particular Italian wines, yeah. that have never been seen outside of their region before because yes. of the small production. Uh, the movie Silence of the Lambs, okay. when they had the fava beans with uh, Chianti. Okay. That was originally an Amarone. They what? changed the, book, the yeah. wine. Shut up. If you read the book, it's actually good. For the movie, I'm they didn't movie. think that Americans would actually grasp the varietal. That makes sense. So they changed from an Amarone. So, yeah. Fava beans with a nice Amarone. What? <laughs> yeah. So they've gone from one of Italian's yeah. Upper wine yeah. to, to yeah. something that's actually an Italian table wine. Table wine no. Which yeah. is very, very common. That makes sense. <laughs> so now for the lobster, thermidor, and filet. So excited. This has been catching my eye for a while now. Holy. Oh my god. So where most people actually have uh, turkey for oh. Christmas dinner or ham. This is my family's traditional Christmas dinner. We have surf and turf, and so old family recipe, the Thermidor, which kind of, I think, dates back to the 30s, 40s, when it was most popular at supper clubs. So that, if you like it, my grandmother thanks you. It literally, <laughs> I swear on everything I love, amazing. So we start with a nine ounce to 10 ounce tail, Mm -hmm. And we bake the lobster just long enough to separate the meat from the shell. And as soon as that happens, we pull the meat out, dice it up, and then I make a cream sauce with spices, baby portobello mushrooms awesome. are in there, cheese, and sherry. Mm -hmm. We pack it back into the shell and put a breadcrumb top that's encrusted with Parmesan Ooh. on top and put it back in the oven and bake it the rest <laughs> ready. Sorry. <laughs> that good. Oh my god. That is so freaking good. We use small growers, small farmers, and I think that makes a, a huge difference yeah. when you buy that way for your restaurant. Um, just starting off with good product is the, the best because we really Definitely. don't overdo any kind of rub. We use a wow. really nice olive oil. Wow. And then a little cracked white and black pepper, a little bit of coarse sea salt. That's really our rub. That's really there's it? Nothing, there's nothing else to it. Well, this this is actually kind of an interesting thing. Uh, my sister-in-law bought me Jerry Seinfeld's book. Okay. 
His wife uh, did a cookbook where she purees vegetables okay. and hides them into her kids' food. <laughs> and hides it into her kids' food. Yes, yeah, she okay. makes chicken fingers and awesome. the batter that so she uses. So she purees <laughs> beets and carrots yeah. and then sneaks everything it, into yeah, the food. Yeah, because if they hear it, they'll yeah, yeah, they don't, yeah. wanna, they don't wanna have it. So Scott was in the kitchen with me one day and I just bought a case of broccoli, which he hates. Also making a cake. Scott's leafing through the book and decides to siphon off some of the cake batter and starts playing around with it. And just as, grabbing spices and yeah. trying different things. Yeah. And, and, and all, all of a sudden I turn around, my cake is uh, coming, coming out of the oven and Scott is putting in a muffin tin full of four different these, types of muffins. Four different kinds of muffins. And what he comes out with is this spicy broccoli cake where eventually he reduces the sugar. It's a little flour cake that is similar to cornbread with a piece of blanched broccoli hidden in the middle. <laughs> now mind you, I didn't, I didn't taste it with the broccoli in it. I cooked, yeah. The first round was out without the yeah. broccoli. And I'm like, then you this is the one. And I cooked it with the broccoli and the staff tried it. And they're like, oh, we love it. And I've never you're tasted like, it you're since. You're good. I'm like, forget it. Like, it's done. He now. eats around the broccoli. He's never it's actually horrible. eaten the broccoli in the center of the cake. I'd rather die. I'm going to try this savory broccoli cake. Oh my god. Mm. Thank you so much. I had such a great night. The food was so amazing. You're the bomb. Oh, thank you for coming. Mm. That thank was awesome. you so much. It was really great to see I'm you. I'm going to be back. Don't you worry. And I want all my food ready for me when I come back. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm here in Key West, Florida at Better Than Sex with the two owners, Danny and Lenny. Lenny, I like that. Is it Lenny? It's Len. Len. That's okay though. It's I haven't heard that in a while. You know, I like to give people their own little names when I see their character and he seems more like a Lenny. You got that right. <laughs> Alright, so we're here with Better Than Sex. As you can see, all this beautiful. We have chocolate beer. We have peanut butter perversion. Peanut butter perversion. Tongue bath truffle. Mm. This is called the sex appeal. And, and that the beverage is called the money shot. Oh my god. So this is all I've already tried the chocolate beer. It's to die for. Amazing concept, guys. How did you come up with it? <laughs> well, uh, it started with Len and I were first married, moved to Key West right after we got married, and he asked me to make a dessert. So being the new wife, I thought to myself, wow, I'm really going to show him. Ooh. Being Italian as yeah. well, yeah. Right? you show exactly. your love with food. Exactly. And so several hours later, when he was a little bit more cranky, he's like, what's taking so long? Yeah, how long did it take for a cake? <laughs> I had gone to the store, I had gotten my ingredients, I knew what I wanted to make, I saved my recipe, I saved my, um, my uh, receipt and everything for some strange reason. Anyhow. Made the dessert, several hours later produced this um, two layer Oreo cake, all decorated up, fancy and whatever. And um, he's sitting on the couch in his pajamas by this time, and I presented to him, and his words were to me, Wow, if you can do this, what else can you do? Wow. And I've learned about myself over the years from that day that yeah. I really, really accept a challenge. I like those. Wow. And so with that, I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to show you what I can do. So that receipt, that recipe, and a photo, which we have hanging in the restaurant, started a huge three-ring binder of everything I made from that day that was dessert-related, because that was my passion. I kept, not wow. knowing why. Yeah. Just something was drawn to it. Yeah. And anyhow, so that's where the recipe part came from. It's one of the biggest ones you can buy at the office store, so it's huge. That's and it, we filled it up. And over the years, um, brought them to friends and family and always got feedback without them you know, knowing anything. We kept hearing, you should do this for a business. You yeah. should do this for a business. Yeah. Well, Len and I always wanted to own our own business. Yeah. We thought it would be a bed and breakfast or something like that. However, we met waiting tables. 
Wow. Yes, we did at the Home of Reason Orlando, and then we opened up the one in Tampa. Oh, wow. Together. And um, we knew we could work together, and we had restaurant experience. Yeah. Other than waiting tables in the back of the house as well. Um, not in the kitchen. For the right, right, I don't wear pajamas. Don't ever use that I'm again. sorry. Oh, I know <laughs> he does. He's just shy. <laughs> Sleepy. <laughs> That's oh, amazing. Wait, wait. Very passion, like a lot of passion was into it. Absolutely. Like very real. Like that's it's why it comes real. out like this. Yeah. Like your heart's into it. Absolutely. It's amazing. It's very, very real. Has your food ever caused sex to break out at a table? Uh, a bathroom. Really? Yeah. Wow. At our other location, uh, it was the girls' bathroom. We're, our other location, the women's room, you had to walk by the kitchen. I so think like, I you, you, that. you pull the food out the window, and, and the girls are walking behind you. So yeah. we're standing there one night, and a flood of water comes out of the bathroom. It looked like the Titanic. Just a flood of water come out, and we're bounding on the door, trying to get in there. I open up the door, and there's one girl with her panties down yeah. to her ankles. Yes, and the other girl was on the sink, and the bat and the sink ripped off from the wall. No. And so the PVC, we couldn't shut it off. We had to find the emergency water valve, and just in time. Girl runs out. We're like, get the heck out of here! There's a flood in the restaurant. So it was two girls. It was two it girls. Wasn't... Yeah, they were they were having some fun they with the sink. They were filling this. Up. So uh, we didn't have a sink for a couple days. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome story, though. I know it's restaurant, but that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We've, oh, had a, we've had a, we've had our share over the years, but yeah, most people come in here and it's kind of nice and intimate, and romantic. And, 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 and her, her words to me were, I'll never forget it. She looked with her panties down. And I'm like, oh yeah, all right. And then she goes. It just happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> the food really uh, turned her on that yeah, much. That's right. a good one. All right, Bill Maher once asked Anthony Bourdain about the food porn craze and if food is better than sex. And Anthony Bourdain said, it depends who's cooking and who's fucking. I'd agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'd agree, too. Would you? I would agree. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I and mean, you know what? Each person has a different palate. Yes. For both. That's and true. And it just so depends true. on what he said. Exactly. I will not repeat right. it. Exactly. If your needs are met on the plate or in the bed. Exactly. Well, or, or depending on the personality. We get some people that here mm -hmm. are quite shy about it. They yeah. want to come in here, really? but they're really, really shy. Like, we call these rim jobs. We don't call them that much anymore because some people are really taken aback by it. And then some people will dive right into the concept. I love the concept, yeah. But some do and some don't. That so I sense. would agree what he's saying, and it just depends on you. But the thing about this place, it doesn't matter wh what your nature is. You still want to go in and see what's going on. Because you're curious. still kind of curious what's going on in there. And, and uh, yeah, you'd be surprised how many people bring children in here for love of God. We don't oh, encourage that. No, they should not be bringing <laughs> children in here. Just because of, especially, you know, yeah. we don't encourage. Yeah. yeah. The little, the little toddlers. And they'll they'll be together. repeating it. Let's go. Yeah, right? We have another toddler. Can I have Keep a the job, mommy? We have still sinks now. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's we funny. We should. Nice. So I was at your other location. I brought a friend. Her name's Puma Swede. Um, we walked in. It was like we both fell in love. Literally, like she's very like into this kind of stuff. So am I. But this was like breathtaking. Way better than we imagined. We had the desserts, I can't remember the names, but they were, you know, sexual and nice, and we had it, we got drunk, we had, um, I know they were like dessert martinis, we had a lot of those. We sat like in a couch part. Yeah, a red couch. It was amazing. Um, I never forgot it. It's been three and a half years, almost four, and it's still in my mind and hers. So it was like one of the best experiences I've had in Key West, personally. Is this, I, I'm, I'm being very honest. Do you guys know what I'm famous for? Or why I'm famous? Does it have to do with food or porn? <laughs> yes, both, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm just, just a lucky guess. Yeah. You know, you I, can say. I won't, you know. <laughs> I, I don't. Should I? As you know, my name's Mariah Milano. Um, I'm a retired porn star, international porn star. I've been in over 50 magazines, hundreds of movies. Um, one of the top 20. So I'm just gonna rush back to my phone when I'm done here. No, no. <laughs> I am gonna show With her. The staff. Yeah, with sure. her. <laughs> you have work to do, honey. Yeah. Sorry, you're on your own. Have fun. Yes. And now yeah. I do. I'm like I do like my cooking videos and then the stuff that I, the other stuff that I do. So if anybody knows about food and sex, it's me.
I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you at all. There's no way. No argument from us. Well, that's a compliment. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you guys so much. Loving what we do. That is awesome. And everybody, I'm with the owners at Better Than Sex, Danny and Lenny. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. You guys have to come here. It's so amazing. That uh, whipped cream kind of blocks the liquid. If you're not careful, it gets all over your face. Oh. All right, so this is one of their famous drinks called the Money Shot. Yes. You guys ready? We are ready. Here it is. Oh. Oh my. You sure you're retired? Mmm. <laughs> wow. I don't think I did that right. But my that first time having one. That was the swallow. Point. That was the swallow shot. <laughs> I never did one of those types. <laughs> Tastes wow. good. Wow. I had to finish it's that. It's a homemade uh, coffee liqueur. And you did it well. Mm. Mm. Yummy. Very good. Mm. Love it. Now I'm going to try the peanut butter perversion. Oh. Oh my God. Mm. Way better than sex. Awesome! Oh, Alright! At least a close second. Close. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely better. And then we have... The sex, sex appeal. appeal. Some Scotto with a white chocolate sugar rim. Do you guys see that? How beautiful that is? Yes. Holy shit. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Amazing. You could say that. Yeah! You could say that. Amazing. Honest reaction. I like that. <laughs> I am so excited. It's better than this sucks. <laughs> so I'm going to de devour all of this, guys. So don't be jealous. So this one is, again, the tongue bath truffle. Tongue bath truffle. So what you have is a, um, it's actually one of our gluten-free desserts. It is a flourless chocolate truffle. Those are the two wedges. In the center is a raspberry sorbet. This is edible chocolate art on top and you have dark chocolate painted on the plate. Wow. So the idea behind this is to try each element separately. Okay. So go ahead and taste the truffle itself. And then in your second bite, go ahead and get the truffle with the other elements all together. The chocolate art, the whipped cream, and the dark chocolate. Gotcha. So this one first. Yep. Yummy. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, the second bite is the second step in sex. You'll be even more excited than the first. So okay. that's the idea. There's that's always the a idea. reason for all the elements on your plate. Holy shit. Yeah! Holy <laughs> oh shit, twice! Yeah. Oh, twice. twice! This is literally, like, I can't. I'm, I, and this too? Sure. Is it by all two? of it together, yep. Oh, Everything good. is there for a reason. They're all meant to complement one another. Go together. Oh my god. You guys, this is amazing. If you don't come here, you're missing out. You're really missing out. Better than sex. Key West. Have a great night, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.